Welcome back to another show and tell video. Today we're looking at two examples of 30 by 173 millimeter uh, rounds. And these are uh, NATO as well as uh, listed under the Stanag uh, convention of uh, naming as well. So these being 30 millimeter rounds, uh, just brief uh, research, uh, typically used in auto cannon, as well as other types of items like um, a revolver cannon that's typically a single barrel, but it usually has some sort of a revolving shuttle mechanism to get the rounds uh, uh, aligned with the barrel chamber, etc. Uh, then there's the uh, Gatling gun, uh, um, uh, the multi-barrel uh, power-fed gun. In this case, with the 30 millimeter, it, was, it would be the uh, GAU GAU-8 Avenger. Um, let's see, uh, what else we got? We also have the chain gun. Uh, there's a couple different examples, but the U.S. version would be the Mark 44 Bushmaster 2. That's how it was listed at the time. I do believe it's been produced in uh, uh, might be a different mark for that, like a Mark 4. And then it's been uh, also been uh, adapted as well to other platforms, but uh, typically its uses would be anti-aircraft, anti-material, anti-armor, and then used against other vehicles, whether they be land-based, water-based, you know, aircraft. Uh, besides uh, uh, being mounted uh, in vehicles, they would be like, uh, for example, fixed-wing aircraft. Um, and uh, touching back on uh, naval vessels, uh, you know, something that can uh, actually carry the weight and ammunition of an uh, item of this size. And uh, land vehicles be wheeled and tracked vehicles, typically uh, AFVs, armored fighting vehicles, that sort of thing. And again, uh, the Bushmaster would have been used in the Bradley series, Striker series for the U.S., I think from uh, the Lynx and Puma, respectively, for German usage. Uh, what else? Um, Air platforms uh, such as the Saab Vigan would be their uh, cannon on that, uh, that uh, air platform. Um, I believe I'm reading this correctly. It's been modified to the GAO 23A and then applied to upgrades on the AC 130. 30 J Ghost Rider as well as the AC 130 W Stinger 2. Uh, I guess the original Stinger goes back to the, I think the AC 117 K twin engine twin tail uh, version. Uh, and the AC 130W is a descendant of the MC 130W Dragon Spear. All these very cool sounding names. Let's see what else. Uh, yeah, and on those platforms, they'll be replacing the original uh, GAL 12 25mm and the Bofors 40mm. So. 30 millimeter platform is actually replacing both the 25 and the 40 on certain uh, uh, tail numbers. So, let's see, I think that covers the basic research. Let's take a closer look at these rounds. These are dummy uh, display rounds, but the casings are actually originally fired casings. So you can see here, this one actually still has the, the uh, 
markings and all the lot numbers and uh, code numbers on there. So you can see it's listed as a PGU 15 slash B a TP. Here's 30 millimeter. That's how the primers are literally staked in at four points. And the size of that primer, this one is struck. You can see the size of the head stamp area, which is basically blank. And the large rim as well. Bobble neck design of the casing. And these, again, are dummy uh, inert rounds, but uh, they've been... Um, they have inserts that are very hard plastic, as you can hear that sound there. And they are fixed in place. This one does have a rattle, so there is still some loose material within here. This one, on the other hand, you can barely see that this one is a 30 millimeter HEI PG. You, I can't read that if it's a 13 or a 15 D slash B, and then also the lot numbers OLs. This one's an OLM, and this one also, this digit starts with 200828460-10, but this one's a little bit rougher condition. Similar material on the casings. This one actually has digital uh, applied uh, information down here as well. And this one is more of a roll stamping onto there. It's much more clear, that marking, besides the front applied markings. But pretty good uh, size there. Now what's interesting is these casings are appear to be non-magnetic and I think one reason for that is to, is weight savings because in order to carry a payload of a, a, of a loadout of these rounds to, to actually be of any use each one of these rounds one fully loaded with projectile and propellant is going to be of significant weight and you multiply that by your loadout and uh, uh, it's going to be uh, pretty significant so any way that you can save uh, ounces to pounds to tonnage uh, in any way with an aircraft you want that so this is a very strong alloy I'm not sure what. I'm looking at the scrapings. Could be brass, but it might be like an aluminum bronze or something like that. Some sort of very strong aluminum uh, alloy because it is very hard material. Now compare that to a 25 millimeter. This one being a 25 by 37 73 137 uh, don't hold me to that but uh, let me see yeah 25 by 137 uh, this on the other hand is a steel casing so and it actually wet this casing at the weighs quite a bit more than this casing which is kind of interesting so a little tidbit of information there let's do uh, a cartridge comparison with common uh, use cartridges let's start off with our friend the 22 long rifle and you can see of course the whoppings size difference between projectile and just overall dimension comparison between these two so let's try not to lose this in the picture I'm gonna put it right there for now here is a 5.56 millimeter very similar to 223 Remington again bottleneck shape but the scale 
is just enormous the difference 762 by 39 millimeter see here the size difference this just happens to also be a steel round as well interesting there this being the NATO 7.62 by 51 similar to 308 Winchester another bottleneck round you can again see the size difference there lengthwise well because projectile typically seats deeper into the casing it's still dwarfed here we have 762 by 54 rimmed another bottleneck longer projectile but still dwarfed in comparison not sure that's steel yep steel casing as well okay let's see what we got here we got the 303 British rimmed still nowhere close in size and we got a 30 out 6 nope still not even close what else have we got we got 50 cal I'll see how that does. Wow, now we're talking. But, uh, nope. Still dwarfed. See the whopping size difference between the uh, case heads. Even the projectile, this just happens to be a loose 50 caliber projectile. You can see the size difference between this. This is a 20 millimeter. See the size difference there. Even on the base right there. Quite a size difference. And projectiles, one is a loose one that got pulled. Much smaller still. This was the casing it actually got pulled from. And we also showed this earlier, this one being the 25 millimeter. Projectiles are getting closer, but still you can see a diameter difference, length difference in projectiles and how they're seated because they'll be right about there in comparison. And the amount of propellant in this compared to this, you got length difference as well as diameter difference contributing to a larger volume of propellant that can be uh, stored within each uh, round of these 30 millimeter as well so let's see if we can figure out how we can actually put these in a better location here so again 22 long rifle 5.56 millimeter, 7.62 by 39, 7.62 by 51, 7.62 by 54, 303 British, 30 odd 6. Let's see if we can get the 50 cal in there. 20 millimeter in there and we got the 25 millimeter so, almost got it there we go so a little bit of a round comparison between 30 millimeter by 173 millimeter versus a whole bunch of uh, commonly found calibers to current date. So, I show a difference between volume and other dimensions. 
This has been another show and tell video. Feel free to check out our show and tell videos on vintage mill surf tools and other expanded topics. We also do unboxing videos as well as a series of book review media reviews and a series called Curios for the Curious. Videos on more artsy type objects. Feel free to check all those out. Feel free to like and subscribe and thanks for watching. See you next time.